Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next couple of hours, along with Nick. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Good morning. Hi. And Gal is here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Didn't switch. Hey, good morning. Hey, switch, there you switch. Are. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> and Spence is here. Yes, sir. Good morning. I'm telling you, the director of this show is just terrible. Yeah. Yeah, what would you pay oh, for? Yeah. <laughs> Our number is 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And this morning's show is made possible by vMix Software and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. And Amnon had his Directors Guild membership revoked. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Amnon... Isn't the director? It's the AI. <gasps> yeah, and I, I, we had a problem this morning. I, I with with Beamix try I was trying to adjust something, and then when Nick got in and fixed it, it wouldn't switch at all anymore. And Nick, uh, when I restarted, I was thinking, is this because maybe I'm using, I'm still using the old version because of the switching. Uh, how do you find oh, out if because, it, it's because you it's because you changed a whole bunch of different settings yeah you don't know which which but one no, actually the the thing is i'm wondering how do i find out if it switches without actually doing it that's you don't yeah that's why it was so hard to track down that issue for so yeah. many weeks well anyway everything's fine now it's not i'm very frustrated by it oh Oh, <laughs> so I guess uh, the the I don't know. Where's Katie? The, the, oh, Katie said that she was going to sleep in. She had oh, to. Okay. She drove to Winston Salem and Charlotte yesterday and got in very very late. And she said, "I'm going to sleep." Sleep. I, I'll Understood. bet she went to uh, what is that uh, furniture store in Charlotte. Everybody. Ikea. Ikea. Yeah. I bet she went there and to get furniture for the for her house. It's a very affordable way to do it. Yep. Um, I wonder I wonder how Ikea is doing since they decided not to concentrate on new retail stores when they canceled the plans to build their complex here. Yeah. I don't They're know. not building their complex in Cary? Oh, they, no, they that's it. where Epic that's is. That's where, yeah, they, they were going to buy the or move into the old uh, Carrytown Center property. Uh, that, that's the that's the location that Epic ended up buying, yeah. right? Yeah, that's yep. what Epic wanted to buy. Which I don't yeah, know what they're going to do. It's all their workforce is remote now, so I'm not sure what the hell Epic's going to do. They might flip that property. I'm not. Uh, I'm no, not no, sure no, 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 no. They already. They, it's it's uh, sort of like halfway destroyed already. Well, they might just. I wonder if they'll I, just I tear don't. it all down and do something else because they uh, already tore street. it down. So. Oh, okay. Have they started rebuilding it yet? No, I, I think the, the debris is still there. Yeah, that's a that's going to be a tough uh, it's going to be a tough issue for a lot of these companies. Well, even um, I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. You you know, Spence mentioned IKEA and that expansion. Amazon's doing the same thing, or or at least figuring out they they've had plans to ramp up all these shipping facilities, and all of a sudden they're like, eh, maybe not. There are there are financial institutions, Bloomberg and others. That are saying that uh, they're they're shedding inventory and other and expansion plans because they see oh, what's coming. Sure. I mean, they're not it's not getting a lot of attention, but the, the forecast for next year is is very bad. Yeah, unfortunately. 
Yeah. And it's so, not just it's not just an it's, it's an economic thing in that it's not that people just decide not to buy anything. We're going to run out of diesel fuel. Well, there's we've got a 24 day supply of diesel fuel now, which is way way low. And if we lose our transportation infrastructure, it won't be anything to buy. Without getting too far into the weeds on it, you know, this is part of the the part of the goal of raising interest rates is to slow down the economy. And part of slowing down the economy is people losing their jobs and having less money. That's yep. that's not a conspiracy there. That's literally what is the that's that's How you point. slow down the economy? I mean, that's just so when you raise interest rates and and try and tap the brakes, that's the that's the end result. Um, so this it's expected that something yeah. like that would happen. So it's a good thing you think. Well, it's not a good thing, but it's if the goal is to slow down the economy, then this that's how you do it. Unfortunately, hmm. it's just the it's just the reality of of doing that. Um. So I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not like a big yard sailor, um, but I was driving home Friday night from a friend's house and I saw that there was going to be this neighborhood yard sale just, um, just like two, two or three blocks up. Mm -hmm. So I, I went out early yesterday morning and it was just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of junk, a lot of older stuff, some, you know, cheap flat screen TVs, but I got this gem. I got this Yezu. FT 101 E, which is a ham radio from like the 1970s. It's, I don't know if it works. It's covered in cobwebs, but I got it for $10. And this thing, uh, working on eBay sells for like eight or 900 bucks. So I could have potentially grabbed a, is it tubes? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a unit from the 70s. I mean, you can wow. see there's a heater on it to heat up the tubes. So I've got to, um, <laughs> I've got to build a power supply that I can slowly bring up the voltage on it. So I don't automatic because these caps probably haven't been charged in 20 years. So I'll, if I put full voltage on them, they'll, they'll explode. What, what, uh, um, what, what does it, what power supply do you need? I don't know. I haven't done anything. I picked it up yesterday morning. I had a full day yesterday of political okay. stuff okay. and I need to. So this afternoon I'm going to open up the garage, grab the air, uh, the air compressor, clean it all out. and. I've got that. Well, let's see behind. I mean, the, does it have a, a cord? Did you look? It does have a cord. Yeah. Um, and but it, I, I haven't done it. I haven't looked okay. at anything into it yet, but I've got a bench power supply. I should be able to slowly bring up the voltage on it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Alan says people put 11 meter, 11 meter crystals in them. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about this, um, but so oh, nice. hopefully it works. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, if not, Looks like it's a, there's a whole bunch of since it's such a it's popular cool. and old it's just cool radio. to look at. It's cool to yeah, look at. Yeah, fortunately, there's a lot of um, since this was such a popular device, there's a lot of YouTube videos and troubleshooting things um, that are out there. So that hmm. that's good to know. Yeah. I had I had a CB radio and I got a picture of it here. My first CB radio was a Sonar Model G, which is a a tube set with that had uh, eight potential crystal settings for channels and you had to buy the individual crystals for transmit and receive. And it was made in Brooklyn, New York. Hmm. And I, I, I had it those like the first three years I was a CB radio person. And then eventually I got a, a transistorized one, but I love that unit. Nick and, had and Nick, tunable final stages. You could boost it. Nick and, and uh, yard sales. Oh, you know, he's always somehow. The last, the, the, the only other thing that comes up is again, $10. Yes. That printer, the brother <laughs> H yep. 112. I, I got this thing at a yard sale like eight years ago and it was $10 or $5. And it came with a whole bunch of extra cartridges and paper. And it is, it is the best yard sale find I've ever gotten. It's a hundred dollar printer. Yep. Works like a champ. Nice. So I don't do it very often, but when I do. You. You were laying something. Yeah. Well, I guess it, you know. Yeah. I guess it's a, it's a, it's a, if I started going more often, I'd find it, I'd realize that I, I don't nah, you go to really look out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Very nice. So, uh, what can uh, we talk about? Uh, Twitter, not Twitter, uh, sorry, Parler. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> our buddy Yi is buying it. <laughs> That's a very interesting uh, turn of events there. And so I'm wondering the, what's if... the latest. Kanye Hi. West is buying it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that he's like worth billions? Yeah, well, of course. It's amazing. I didn't talk about it much, but he can say whatever he wants. He's got like $4 billion. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, oh, his, gonna... um, it's not just even his music that made him. I mean, his music made him a whole bunch of money, but it was his, uh, his, his Yeezy cl- brand with yeah, uh, Adidas made brand. him a literal fortune. Um, very, very popular. But it's interesting. There was a story about this that, that he got banned from Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, lately, because of some some remark that he made, then he said, "Yeah, they're really uh, suppressing conservatives, and we can't use our uh, freedom of speech and all that." And it's like weeks later, he just goes out and buys parlor and says, "Yeah, now everybody can say whatever they want to say." And I was thinking that would have been so nice if back when they banned uh, Trump from Twitter, if Twitter could have, if Trump could have turned around and instead of all that controversy about, oh, that network is this and he built it and he didn't give credit and he did the block, just buy this. He could have, but he chose not. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to, to find out how, how it works out. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it won't be. Uh... It's 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 the same thing with all the other platforms. It, they're all, you know, some level of of echo chamber. Um, unfortunately, that's just the reality. Um, Parlor's tech is pretty good, though. Um, I've just logged back into my account for first time in a while. Um, who were the principals of Parlor when it started? Weren't they? I don't remember who remember. it was. I remember there was some controversy there about the uh, original investors. Um, yeah, I don't remember to be honest with you. Dan, uh, Dan Bongino, one of the. Now he's behind Rumble. Um, oh, he, I knew he was with Rumble, but I thought he was somehow involved with. He Paul. might have been. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, it'll be interesting yeah. to see what uh, what comes of that. Yep. All right. Um, listen to this interesting story. Microsoft is working on a PC manager app that's designed to boost your computer's performance, much like CCleaner. A beta version of Microsoft PC Manager includes storage management and the ability to end task quickly and control which apps start up with Windows. Much of this functionality is already baked into Windows, but this PC Manager app puts all puts it all in one useful location. There's even a browser protection section that makes it easier to change the default browser than what exists in Windows right now. The storage manager features includes, feature includes the ability to manage apps or remove those that are rarely used. And there's also a full cleanup scan available or a scan to find large files on your drives. The process management features a more simplified version of the task manager, of the task manager, so you can quickly kill processes that might be eating up RAM. Hitting the main boost button will, will clear temporary files and free up memory which could be useful on older PC. So they're saying that they're working on it. Uh, there was no word about it that anything is available even in beta. But that's interesting, you know, that when they were saying that, that, oh, with Windows 10, Windows 11, you don't need anything like this. This is, I, I would say that it is kind of, cryptic to use all these features through Windows, through the task manager, through uh, file manager and all that. And to put it all in one place, that's a very good idea. So they call it I PC. Think, Go ahead. I think this stuff is good. This is um, pivotally important for a lot of these cheaper computers. Like we talked about last week, that $100 um, yeah. 
uh, gateway uh, laptop and things like that. That's where you'll really see a, a, a software like this um, probably be useful if if it's even useful. I mean, I, I don't. Well, we'll, we'll it's see. It's available as a public beta on the Microsoft store. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. It's called uh, PC Manager. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, on the one hand, getting something like this from Microsoft is, I mean, if you're considering downloading CCleaner, I would say, yeah, take the Microsoft tool. Oh, absolutely. I, I would not touch CCleaner today with a stick. So uh, just because of their past record. Uh, there are other tools. Um, but I don't know. If Microsoft is developing such a tool, I would say just bake it into the uh, OS. And specifically here, I wouldn't even uh, uh, incorporate it in the OS as a se separate UI. It just needs to be, you know, the part about the uh, processes that needs to be part of task manager, the part of, uh, I don't know, uh, cleanup that needs to be part of the cleanup tool. There are tools in, in Windows that but... already deal with part of that. It just needs to be better. No, but that's Gal, that's the whole thing. I mean, yes, all these utilities are available kind of in Windows, but to put it all in one place that somebody can go and But say, they're not related to one another. I do not agree. No, I, I know. Uninstalling is uninstalling. It has nothing to do with the task only, manager. Right? They're all, they, they are related in one way. They are made to boost the performance of your computer. So they can, it's a, it, you go in and you clean the temporary files. You get rid of this. You get rid. It's just like what CCleaner does. It's putting. Yeah, it... and 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 I never recommend CCleaner no, to I... anyone, even somebody who knows what he's doing. Right. right. So we we can argue about CCleaner because I still use it, and it's and it's fine. I never see don't... an improvement after using a tool like CCleaner. Okay, it's like if you measure. Yeah. There oh, is never oh, yeah. an no. improvement. Okay. Yeah, but so... I mean, it's nice in order to get rid of. Temporary files, it does better job. But the of, system gets rid of temporary files. Well, then why is Microsoft putting it there? I you see that's I don't the, know. That, uh -huh. the system. Well, and again, I think it that, goes right. But it goes back to the I think it goes back to the low performance machines where on your computer, Amnon, cleaning your temporary files is not providing you any additional benefit at all. Zero right. benefit. The only thing now, is space. But, but again, that's not providing yeah. you a benefit. You're not out of space. As far, like, yeah, you've got as, one of these as far as 32 gigabyte EMMC Windows 11 devices that was $89. Mm -hmm. Having something like this is 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 important because a couple of megabytes of space does play a big impact when you have a 32 gigabyte hard drive. Yeah, you run um, out quick. What would you say? I said you run out quick. Yeah, you run out quick. Yeah. But for a desktop computer or a mid tier or a high end laptop, there's just no there's no reason for it. it doesn't it's not going to provide you any benefit. Like Gal said, it's not that the so, it's not that the software doesn't do anything. It's just that it provides no meaningful meaningful uh, anything for a, a mid for for a computer that's got enough power. And all and it can create problems too. I mean, it can definitely yeah it cause could. more problems than it than it helps. Oh. So is this an automatic sequence or do you have to invoke it? What do you mean? I mean, uh, one of the sites that I see shows uh, an actual UI where you invoke a boost or a scan or something. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and the other part of the article is talking about that this might be in the future baked into Microsoft Defender. Oh, that would say so that would make I'm sense. I'm guessing Microsoft Defender will, for now, well, no, I, I'm guessing it won't even be Microsoft Defender. It'll be part of the security dashboard in Windows, and it'll prompt you when it detects certain states. But that also means it'll actively scan, which means if it's actively scanning in the background, it is using resources. So, right, this is like the chicken and the egg thing. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm I'm glad that this is coming from Microsoft as from somebody else. I would rather use either an open source tool on the one hand and two have Microsoft deal 
within efficiency of the OS differently, right? It's like the balance act needs to be yeah, it's any, any different time, here. Anytime, we always said, anytime you get a, a program or a utility like this from the author of the, the, from the operating system, from Microsoft, it's always it's going to be better because they have all the hooks and and to get in and do yeah are they as careful with it, it maybe it, not it, it potentially can be better yeah exactly it's correct not, uh, potentially is a good word yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. look microsoft we'll has a slew of tools that is Amazing, right? Just go yeah. to the Sys internal tool set mm -hmm. and uh, uh, well, Sys what, what's available from there is every single tool there is absolutely astounding, right? But those originally weren't written as a Microsoft tool, right? Right. Uh, uh, Mark Rabinovich, right? That was his name. That's his name. Rab uh, he made them right, and then he they bought them out, bought him out, and he Rasinovich, became one of the architects. Rasinovich. Well, Rasinovich, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, and he, uh, he is now. I mean, he he He's was chief architect, architecture of uh, Hyper uh, Hyper V. Uh, he's a prominent figure in Microsoft. Yeah, and it could be that you know his mindset is taking over in this particular case and 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 providing such a tool it'll be interesting let's see let's yeah see we'll happens. have to wait and see try it and i don't know that i'm going to use a beta on my work machine i'll I'll wait a little bit it's it's fine i'll put it yeah. on my laptop this week and give it a shot i Spence? did buy the uh <clears throat> yeah Nick, the lenovo machine uh, from the, specials the I3, last week? The i3 yeah let me pull up my old specials and take a look yeah it was the i3 it, it's actually got um oh, six, the idea pad one i yeah, yeah yeah it's got six cores eight eight threads do you have did uh, you get it yet i got it yeah oh and yeah and nice i i took off windows s right away yep and then it was a task to get rid of the mic of uh, the uh mcafee crap Oh, it always it is. Uh, it's you. It doesn't appear in the as an app to remove, and it doesn't yep. appear in your programs right. as to remove. You have to go in and get the download, download the tool to remove all the garbage. Is it just every once in a while a pop up would come up? Yep, McAfee's. You need to scan. You know, it's like I am going to remind you of a tool that I talked about a while back. Bulk crap, crap on yeah, Oh no, I realized. Yeah. Yeah, that is exactly the tool for stuff like that. That's what I use. Yeah, on I, that. I, I it doesn't take any crap. <laughs> yeah, I got. I used the tool. I wanted to see what would happen, and it worked fine. It, it took yeah. it off, but it does not appear anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I had but the how's problem. the computer? Very good, fast. Yeah, I like. It's my first Windows 11 machine. I just haven't lightweight had any hardware. Lightweight, great, decent power. Great, great battery life. Yep, good battery life. Uh, it, there's one. Some people criticize the screen uh, as it's very fast, but not necessarily the best best resolution. Uh, but that was, you know, for that price, what do you expect? You know, it's, it's I can't notice any difference. You know, I, I wouldn't. Well, say remember those who were complaining about the screen might have bought it way back when it was more expensive. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the criticism of of, of the. Uh, uh, USB C port that is not a charging port. That's the only thing that people, two things yeah. that people commented on that I thought were valid. Which Nick has a solution for. <laughs> well, I don't have a solution. I am, I am attempting a, uh, a hack of the century with a U. So I've got a, got a big USB C power bank, um, that the 30,000 milliamp power bank. And as Spence mentioned, these cheaper Lenovo laptops don't have USB-C charging. But there is a company that makes a cable, which is a four by 1.7 millimeter power cable to USB-C. So my goal is to, and what I ordered was a DC to DC upstepper 
so that I can use a 12 volt power bank to get 19 volts into USB-C into the laptop to attempt to charge it. So this will end in one of two ways, either me blowing up the laptop, which is a high probability <laughs> or it not working at all. So um, I'll be attempting that over the next couple of weeks. Well, I think that if, if Nick, it, it's possible, potentially dangerous because you don't know that it has, if it's, if it's a C port that's for communications only. I'm not using the C port, excuse me. I'm using the, the, the barrel connector to a USB-C breakout. Oh, okay. So you're going to use yeah. USB for as a power source. Okay. Correct. So, but, yeah. uh, but I need, but I've got a, a power bank that's 12 volts at two and a half amps, which is not enough to charge it. So I've got a DC to DC step up converter that I purchased off of Alibaba. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> and I'm going to print, I, I'm, I've mocked up a little 3d printed case for it. And, uh, yeah, you got so, to make sure you turn off the Chinese military monitoring that's built yeah, into it. I'm going to attempt it on my old Lenovo laptop first and see if I blow that up. And if not, then I'll maybe if I have the balls, I'll try it on my my current one. Um, hey, Nick. But, yeah. When are you coming to Raleigh? I don't know. I have a whole bunch of laptop 19 point some volt um, power supplies. You're missing it out. I'm not, I'm not looking for a power supply. No, what I I'm understand. Looking for I understand. But then you don't need to use that power supply that came with it. And because it puts the 19 and you can connect it directly to that. Uh, yeah, but he wants everything to no, go need, out from, an, from a USB-C battery. Yeah, yeah, I need it. To, I, I'm, I'm doing 12 oh, volts, not 120 for that. Oh, yeah, He oh, wants oh, to oh, use oh, the oh. power bank as his, as his source. Okay. I yeah, thought, exactly. Okay, I thought, so that's what I'm attempting. Um, Stay tuned. Well, <laughs> it's all I can are you smoke? Are you smoke detectors? Have you tested them recently? <laughs> they, I have, and they work. They're connected to Home Assistant. So if I pull, burn down the house, at least I'll get a notification <laughs> yeah. that I've burned down the house. You'll know exactly when. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. As long as my Z-Wave controller is working correctly, we'll be good to go. <laughs> all right. Here's uh, something else to bite into. Nearly forty-three percent of millions of devices studied by asset management provider Landsweeper are unable to upgrade to Windows 11 due to the hardware requirements Microsoft set out for the operating system. How many? 43% of millions. Okay. Uh, Landsweeper said 42.76% of the estimated 27 million PCs it tested across 60,000 organizations failed the CPU test, albeit better than the 57.26% in its last test a year ago. Although, altogether, 71.5% of the PCs failed the RAM test and 40. 14.66% the TPM test. We know that those who can't update to Windows 11 will continue to use Windows 10. That's what their chief strategy officer said. Or they'll switch to Linux. Well, no, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> just think about Lance all Weaver, the available... who's Just me wishful thinking. It's, uh, it's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a ton he of available said, hardware to upgrade out there. People he said that even if enterprises are prepared to upgrade their PC fleet to meet the system requirements of Microsoft's latest OS, there are broader issues affecting adoptions that are out of Microsoft's control. Global supply chain disruption has created chip a processor shortage while many are choosing to stick with what hardware they have at the moment due to the global financial uncertainty so a lot of people will stay with windows 10 it, it, and and my, i'm sure microsoft would like to do away with windows 10 also so there was another article that said that microsoft is probably going to have to do something about easing the requirements. No. We'll see. Uh, well, they just need to wait a bit and the numbers will go down and down because more new hardware will come in. And when it gets yeah. to 
below 25%, they'll kill Windows 10 and that's it. That's what they need to yeah, do. Well, I mean, it looks like it's uh, how long Windows 11 been out now? Uh, three years. I don't know, but I mean, it had a lot of iterations in between, right? Yeah. Uh, it we'll sucks for Microsoft, but uh, you want to be the number one uh, operating system on desktops, right? And this is what you need to deal with. Right. There are phones that are still running Android <laughs> 3 out there. Yeah. Right. It's like, but are they, they being, are, are, are they being updated though? I mean, no, they're no. not. Right. Right. I, well, I mean, there are open source projects where you can replace the OS after you replace the boot uh, loader and stuff, but most people don't do that. Right. So, yeah, the, the reality is you, produce something and spread it, I mean, make an effort, right? In being number one, you cannot be number one just by existing. It's always an effort. And this is the result. And this is the price that uh, needs to be paid. And if uh, it's going to eat up some margins on Microsoft, I'm not going to be too sad for them. They just need to keep it up. <laughs> That's all. <Sad. laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a consumer here. I'm not a stockholder, yeah, right? right? Uh, and and I don't think this should be measured by how dare you <laughs> not hold on a second how <laughs> dare you not carry the weight and water for Microsoft Gal how dare you I am I'm using their OS I paid for it <laughs> I want to keep on using it I am the consumer I think I am more important than the stockholder the problem is the market <laughs> thinks differently right that's the that's the problem everything it about is the problem. Everything about market reporting, right, is about the performance of the stock, which is which has nothing to do with how the company is performing. And True. as a consumer, I am pissed off time and time and time again about that, right? Is so I don't count. What, I I am the one that brought you to the point where you could present yourself to the stock market, right? So I don't count. That's what pisses me off. Oh. Does Windows 11 I'm, support? And I'm supposed to be the, 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 the voice of reason in this show, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, we didn't, no, 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 no. We didn't say you're the voice of reason. We said oh, you're, right. balance, you're, balance. you're the balance. I bring the yeah. balance. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're this the malcontents. Is, uh, this, is, this is part of a, a pre-show discussion we had. Uh, so sorry for the inside joke. Does uh, Windows 11 support an external USB TPM? Uh, yeah, I don't know about USB, but it does it does support uh, if you have the proper hardware. Then I don't know about USB. I mean, but yeah, no, it, it is USB about. because some of the TPM chips actually use a USB two header on the motherboard. If you have a desktop, yeah. um, they actually plug into the little header, um, and that's what gets you the TPM. Now I don't know if they yeah I, I don't know if they make external TPM USB like flash drives. Um, oh yeah, but they, they do. do. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, it's what a lot of people used for authentication was if they yeah, didn't have TPM built in, they used an external with it, which was also a, uh, a key. So, yeah, you can at, install uh, Windows 11 without TPM. Oh, I you realize, can, right? Yeah. It just doesn't not, pass the test, and you need to go through like a manual installation, but you can install it, right? So, so I'm guessing, yes, they support TPM to on external drive. I was devices. just wondering if, from a corporate perspective, if they had a whole inventory of machines that didn't support it, they could potentially use a, a, oh, a tiny USB TPM. Well, when well, here's say, all the, I'm sure they can. Here's the modules that are sold by the various manufacturers that I believe use USB headers. So you can see here's one for an MSI motherboard and the Asus motherboard and ASRock. Um, a whole bunch of different go go back devices. Up. Go back up. What no uh, to the second one? I mean, these are twenty twenty. Oh, and that's one is. Oh, it's twenty three. I thought it was a seventy three. Never mind. No, no. I mean, they're so relatively what? cheap, yeah. and they. I believe they go. I believe they go on a. If they go on a USB header. Yeah, I'm looking at one. MSI makes a TPM uh, module for you with a USB header. Twenty seven. Okay, then yeah. Um, actually. 
Uh, looks like maybe depending on the motherboard you have, it looks like there are some motherboards might have a TPM header built in. I, I'm not really sure. It's going to depend on the. What's it's the minimum the minimum TPM version for Windows 11? 2.0. And so that's fine. We got where, a ton of them here on yeah. online. There's all kinds of. Where else yeah. would you need? Why else would you need the TPM module? Uh, a lot of places have uh, uh, auth authentication. Like, for example, if you have a, finger, like a fingerprint scanner, for example, like let's, yeah. uh, Spence, oh. does your laptop have the fingerprint that unlock it? On my older Lenovo does, yeah. Your new Lenovo doesn't? No. Okay, so mine does, and it's on the power button. That is handled through TPM. That's okay. how they handle the... Okay. So I, I was going to say that's another industry that just Windows 11 brought up, but it's not. My no, because the medical industry okay. with key cards and all that stuff okay. used TPM for years. Okay. My financial planner for years has used a TP, an external TPM module for authentication for his laptop to get into their okay. uh, into, into the network for the company he works for. All I know that every time yeah. I do updates on this machine here, which is the newest one that I have, and it's only, it's a, it's a ninth generation. It says it's not ready for Windows 11. So yeah, because it doesn't of TPM, have I, I think ninth generations have TPM too baked in. Well, I, mean, I don't know what else it could be, but I'm, I, ne I never, never even tried. So it. No, it's TPM working. two was introduced around the fourth or fifth generation of uh, uh, iCore. So it's fine. It doesn't bother me. Windows 10 works fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am not. I know why they're laughing. Uh, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> you're ready. I always say all this, over again. Not, I love you to death, but you are the problem that Microsoft yeah, has. I know. You That's are fine. the problem. You yeah. mean I have to update this XP machine? Uh, I can <laughs> say this, Amnon. I'm pretty sure that the machine I'm running on didn't qualify for the automatic update. Uh, through Windows updates, uh -huh. but I did install it through the USB, and there is zero problems. Okay. If you go over and to Amnon's house, on top of that, I hacked the machine. So remember, I I complained about the toolbar not being able to move mm -hmm. to the side and stuff. So I did lose some eye candy from uh, Windows 11 to do that, but I activated like an old module in the OS that allows that. And I'm using um, uh, open, uh, what's it called? Open, open classic, sh open shell menu uh, for the start menu because otherwise those don't don't work. The Windows 11 ones doesn't work because of the and no no problems. So no. I can tell you, it's uh, it's worth working on an OS that the production side of it right is taking care of <laughs> updates and stuff like that. So if you go well, I've got a question for Spence oh, go ahead. on your laptop that you just got, you had to use a windows account, correct? You could, you could load it without a, with a local user. Yours let you do that. I didn't do it, it but it gave you the I, option to, I didn't think uh, 11 think so. let you. No, I didn't. It's it just windows have. 11. I was curious. Okay. But so, so you did use it with an account and everything worked fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I I don't remember now. I'm trying to remember if it prompted me to for a local user. I mean, it, even it's, it's it if it's there, it's hidden. You got it. You got to search. Even for it. Windows yeah. 10 now does not want you to do it. It does. You Windows 10, around. you can find it, but you have no, to say you, I don't if you have disconnect a it from the network. Right. During setup. No, no, no. I, I understand. That's what I'm saying. But if you do it the normal way, that it I'll, won't show it. It will not it show let it. you do it. Yeah. You have to disconnect. But Windows 11 Pro, the same. Oh, so if you disconnect it. Only Pro, if no. you disconnect, yeah. you get the option of okay. using a local. Okay. No. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I had to install Windows on a machine, reinstall Windows, and it was Windows Home. And then I found out that Marshall needed it to be Pro because Pro was on it. So I actually went ahead and instead of using the CD, I let it do a recovery from, and uh, it was still home. He had it 
upgrade it. And then I went and I said, okay, so how do you upgrade? I never did that. And I said, all you oh. need to do is put a, a Run key. Run the setup. Yeah, just the key. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And did that, and it took about maybe one minute, and bam. So, okay, there is Windows 11 Pro. So he had the key for his Windows 11, I mean, Windows 10, sorry, 10 Pro, and sent it to me, and I put it in. But there's a bunch of services and stuff it that needs to did, be installed. It did everything. It did everything. Uh, all I did is I said, you go into the... Uh, settings and there's something there about upgrade yeah and you click it and it asks you for the key and you put it in and it goes ahead and does it Maybe it, it did download it did download stuff i mean okay. it's it's not like it just bam switch it like the windows is the windows home no it did get on the internet and downloaded stuff and did stuff but it took about a minute it didn't do much and that was it. It doesn't need to do much, but there are a bunch of services that it needs to install yeah. that weren't there but, before. So, oh yeah, yeah I, I was surprised at that. And maybe it just does anyway. it in the background. Anyway, yeah. Nick, ah, you ready for specials? I guess so. Oh no, he does. He's not okay. That's uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I was going right. to say, before we start that, I wanted to say that Amnon's house, if you go to his office, is the only office I've ever seen with claw marks on everything. Because he won't, you can't drag him into the future. He's constantly <laughs> holding on to everything. Uh, I won't do this. They're nailed. Hand. They're nailed. <laughs> All right. So we know that it's tough right now to be a, uh, to be a, a white male. It's a really tough set uh, state of affairs right now. So. Instead of having a girlfriend, why not go on a, a fancy date with your brand new 4090 uh, video card? Um, you know, again, women are a lot of work. They're a huge pain in the ass. And with this, you spend like eleven $1 hundred dollars or twelve hundred bucks on a video card and you have a nice have a nice date. I mean, have a burger, a drink, uh, some some looks like some onion rings or maybe some curly fries. I mean, this looks like this looks like heaven to me. Um, system so board think, doesn't eat much right yeah i i think it's the only thing you can do with it right because it doesn't fit most cases anyway <laughs> no it doesn't fit most cases um and you know again it's an uh, it's an upfront cost it costs a lot more but in the long term having a girlfriend or a wife is a lot more expensive than a, a zotac uh 4090 uh graphics card so what, what's his um, name what's his name because i have a case with a maxi her name you mean footprint no i mean the the, the guy who's there, what's I, I can sell him. I'm case. not sure. This is definitely in um, this looks Korea. like it's in somewhere either in Korea or in uh, China or Japan. Um, well, I think uh, Korea based on the and Japan have uh, already embedded in its culture uh, the concept of um, dating inanimate. Uh, yeah, well, they have uh, objects. <laughs> True. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. All right. Let's let's get on the specials here. <laughs> it's worse than that, though. <laughs> uh, uh, Gateway has had a, a family, whole uh, bunch. Show. Um, Gateway has had a whole bunch of computers over the past couple of weeks. I don't know what is going on in terms of uh, who what? owns that Dell. No, is it no, Dell? I don't or, think so. Somebody owns Gateway. Somebody hey, can look it up. Hey, sir. I don't know who owns Gateway, but over the last like month and a half, all of a sudden I've seen a lot of these what look which are what are pretty sleek looking computers coming available. Uh, predominantly uh, I've only I've only seen them at Walmart, so I'm not sure if they've got a a deal to just distribute through there, but this is a Gateway 15.6 inch. So it's a large laptop. They're calling it their ultra slim. It's running on 11th gen core i5 35 G7. It's got the uh, latest Intel Iris XE graphics, 512 gigabytes worth of SSD storage, 16 gigs of RAM, a fingerprint scanner, um, a USB-C port. It doesn't charge on USB-C, but it does have a USB-C port and um, as well as a micro SD and some other things on it for um a very very low price of just 349 uh available yeah. over at a uh, walmart but nick it has a deal breaker there mm. it it says it has cortana it does have cortana fortunately <laughs> bulk crap on installer i believe can can solve that for you 
Um, so yeah, this is a, this is a nice computer. It's got a full, uh, it's got a track, uh, excuse me. It's got a, a numpad built into it, which is not always the case on 15 inch laptops. Um, and, uh, again, for 350 bucks, it's a pretty hard device to beat for the price. Maybe it, maybe it has to do with them having a large inventory of windows 10 only machines that, so, they, that they have, that they, you know, planned on buying and they got them and now it's like, well, that's not our market anymore. First of all, it's 11th gen, right? It's the previous generation. It so it's definitely dumping of, of stock, uh, but a 16 gigabytes, 512 SSD, and, a, and an i5 from the previous generation, yeah, right? On a laptop, this is potentially a fantastic, and excuse me the pun, a gateway device for self-hosting for, uh, uh, self and home automation. Yeah. Right. Because because it has the power to run virtualized stuff, uh, you can slap on Linux if you don't want the Windows on it, and uh, it can run anything. And it isn't power hungry like a server, right? So this is this, this is a great deal. I wonder at what price does the num uh, keys come in? I mean, are the keys... it has num it has numpad. It has one. I know. That's what I'm saying. I wonder at what price uh, the, are the keys smaller on the keyboard itself? They're, no, I mean, it's no. a 15.6 inch, well, so they're probably a little enough. bit smaller, um, but it's not a 14 inch. Now, I will say this. Look, I looked at the reviews on this last night when I was doing specials, and there are some quality issues, but that's to be expected oh, from a computer of this price. Yeah. So if you're expecting yeah. some, you know, sleek aluminum bodied computer with uh, you know, that isn't cheap plastic, then, then this is not your thing. But for, again, 350 bucks, pretty hard to beat. Right. And that's available over at uh, Walmart. So we'll continue with the, um, with the uh, gateways as, as, uh, as they're available. So here's a, another computer for the same price. This one is bigger, though. Um, and it's got uh, less specs, but it's a larger screen. And it's a little bit more of a, um, a reputable brand in terms of build quality. This is the Asus VivoBook 17. This thing is a big boy, 17.3 inch screen. It's running a core i3, 11th gen, 1115 G4, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes uh, worth of SSD, but it does come with Windows 11. Um, the build quality in this is a little bit sleeker. Performance is a little bit less, um, but it is a much larger computer. And um, it looks like it's um, I believe it's, it looks like it's more of aluminum than it is plastic. Um, so you can check that over at Walmart as well for the same price, three forty nine. dollars All right, next up is arguably the best deal that we've ever had on specials. This is the mouse I've used every day for years. I have two spares in the box in the closet because I love this mouse so much. This is the Logitech G600. It is a, uh, what Logitech calls an MMO mouse for a massive multiplayer online, because as you can see on the side profile, it has 12 buttons on the side of the mouse. So this thing was originally used, uh, originally, you know, conceived back in the day of World of Warcraft and Dota and some of these other MMOs that required, uh, you know, fast key bindings and things like this. I use this for a whole bunch of things, control C, control V commands, um, I have macros that I have set up on this for various things like pasting and, and things of that nature. This is normally a $45 mouse on Amazon, and it's on sale for just $19.99. I am the biggest fan of this thing. I've got two ready to go in case I have any problems. Um, it's available over at Staples. Highly, highly recommend this mouse. Uh, and you can do a lot of really cool stuff with those uh, 12 programmable buttons on the side. So what kind of special training do you need to learn how to use the 12 buttons on the side? It's a little weird. I will admit it. When I first got it, I've had it for a couple of years. When I first got it, it was odd. I was constantly, you know, cause it's where your thumb is. So I was always pressing keys when I didn't mean to, but after using it for a while, you, um, you, you figure out how to use it. And again, I've got a lot of really cool stuff that I've been able to do with it. So cool mouse, phenomenal price at $19. How could you manage? I would imagine. Try to think about how it would be if you had your on the side with your fingers, not your thumb. It'd be really yeah. hard. <laughs> it would be. Because you, um, what finger did I press? What key would? <laughs> true. Oh, Nick, man. what happens when you're using a regular mouse? Are you what getting you frustrated because you keep? Yeah, using absolutely. Yeah, because like for example, I have Control hmm. C, Control V, and Enter Mac 
mm-hmm. mapped to buttons one, two, and three. So when I'm copying and pasting stuff, I'm not, I, I, my hand doesn't leave the mouse. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm on a laptop or something like that, it's, a, it's, it's, it's more steps. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm, in, it's not like I'm incapable of using a computer without it, but if you're doing a lot of things, especially data entry or constantly moving things back and forth between programs, um, it's a pretty hard, it's a, it's, it's a phenomenal mouse. It's a great mouse at $45. It's a steal of a deal at 19. So that's available over at uh, Staples. Next up, this is a, a phenomenal steal of a deal as well. Here's a Philips Hue 75 um, watt white and RGB pack of lights, four of them. Now 75 these, watts. So the, what's, yes. the, what's the equivalent bulb then? It's, that's not equivalent. No, no, no. That's it's the, equivalent that's the to 75. That's the wattage? No, no. It's equivalent? equivalent to 75 watts. I, I looked at the specs. It doesn't say that. Yeah, yeah they usually it sell, sell it as the equivalent of 60 watts. Yeah. Well, it says so wattage, 75, 75 watts, watts is good. I usually buy 100 oh, watts equivalent. Yeah. So. Yeah. so this is the higher. Um, I looked this up on Amazon. Uh, they sell a 60 and a 55 watt version of this bulb as well. So I believe this is one of the highest wattages you can get. This pack yeah. is $190 on Amazon. For four, for four of these. The cool thing about them, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, you can use them with the Philips Hue Bridge or some other device, but you don't have to. You can connect these via Bluetooth as well. So if you're trying to maybe put these in, a, in an outdoor light setting, or well, not outdoor, but a, a setting in which you don't have a full home automation system or a hub, you can control these from your phone, which is pretty cool. Um, so you're saving like 70 or 80 bucks on this. Uh, in comparison to what you pay on Amazon. That's form, available over at Costco. The form factor of this is not a standard par because it's got, see how this is, this is a standard par bulb. It's the, oh. the actual surface area of the actual lit bulb is much bigger than this. It extends bulb. It's a really uh, nice bulb. No, I think it's different than what you're holding. It is different. It's a regular A19. Oh, it is an A19. Yeah. This, well, yeah, it is an A19. Now, wait a minute. The this, picture this they show. Is, this is it. Switch right. over, Emma. Okay. Um, but this this picture that they show below with the, on the product details, if you go to the yeah, these, these, oh, are, oh, these are the is not the bulb. No, this is the yeah. bulb. This okay. is the bulb in the picture. Yeah. Well, I was looking at. Well, it shows it in a. Um, I see what Spence it looks is talking a bit, about. It doesn't yeah. look like it. They look the they, they it looks like it looks like that the, they're in some sort of weird can thing yeah, that are yeah. that are giving this weird diffusion thing. That is very misleading. I'm not. That's not a good picture to have on there. Okay. Um, well, it makes oh well. the bulb look huge. But uh, yeah, yes, so that's available over at great. Costco. $100. I'll definitely pick up those. $25, uh, $25 a bulb. Pretty hard to beat. All right. Uh, next up, televisions. If you are a, not a fan of uh, Roku TV or Fire TV and you're a Google TV guy or gal, here's a, a pretty good deal. This is a TCL 50 inch. This is their 4K. It supports UHD and HDR. And it's got Google TV instead of, as I mentioned, some of those other smart um, backups. The device itself has got a USB port. It's got Ethernet as well. It has an eARC port, which is nice to see on a cheaper TV like this, so you can use it with a sound bar. Two, uh, three HDMI's in total, one of them being eARC. An antenna input also supports AV in through a, uh, an adapter, which is nice to connect an older device. It's got a headphone out and an optical. This is very similar to a TCL we looked at last week. That one was a Roku TV. This one is a, a Google TV. And you can check this out for $218, save 22% over at Amazon. Next up, if you are a uh, Mac user and you're a f- actually, you don't even have to be a Mac user, but if you're a fan of the um, Magic Trackpad, which I will admit is a, is a pretty cool device. They're nice trackpads. Um, these are normally about a hundred bucks. It's an older version of it, but this is the, uh, trackpad MC 380 LL a, and, uh, it's about a hundred bucks on Amazon and you can get it for 68 99 over at Woot. So that's the, um, kind of wholesale Amazon subsidiary that they have. Uh, it is the first generation of it, but a pretty good price for, uh, 69 bucks over at Woot. Are, Next are up, they any good with windows? Yeah, I believe so. They're Bluetooth, so they'll connect to any device. Um, I believe I could be wrong, but it's not. I, I know for I don't believe it's any sort of uh, proprietary uh, system there. Um, next up, 
Amna, well, you got a pop up on your screen there. I do. Google Chrome something. Something's oh, oh no, 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 no. It's that stupid thing. I don't know how to stop these. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. We'll deal no, with so it. Came back again. Next up. Very. I'm pissed because three weeks ago I had a 30. Thousand milliamp power bank on here from the same company, Rom Romos R O M O S S, and now <laughs> they've got a forty thousand milliamp version of the same power brick um, for just thirty eight dollars, which is a little bit more than I spent. The cool thing about this one, and I'm, it, you can't see it well on the picture, it actually has a display that will show you the power percentage the voltage and the amperage. So instead of having just a couple of blinking lights that tell you the power uh, that's left, this one has actually got a screen left on it. Excuse me, a screen on it. And in terms of ports, it's got a USB-A for uh, input or input and output. Um, it's got a USB-C, a USB-A, and then two USB type A's for charging uh, other devices. The max that this thing will do is a uh, five volts at three amps, nine volts at two amps or 12 volts at an amp and a half unless you're using the usb um unless you're using the usb uh, c port which can give you uh five volts at uh two amps and some other various things as well so if you're looking for a power bank i will um these things are very bulky they're large they're heavy uh but if you're if size and uh, weight are not a problem this thing is this thing is unbeatable for the price of just $38. So you can check that out over at Amazon. Does Next it, up. Nick, does it use an, an adapter cable for the 12 volts? Like what is the, what's the play? You got USB-C and A. But a USB-C and type A. So no, it'll do 12 volts straight out of a USB-A port. Um, so. Oh, it's, but it's an adapter. USB-C has a protocol to negotiate the voltage. So you can get five or 12 on the same wire. Yeah. No, 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 no cables, no adapter. No, but I mean, whatever the 12 volt device is you're powering, say it was just something that's a cigarette lighter adapter. Yeah. You, a cable you'd have that to goes from USB that cable. A to cigarette lighter. Yeah. You could, you could buy that, presumably. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's what I was um, wondering, just how versatile it is. Hmm. Yeah. It is super versatile. As Gall mentioned, it'll negotiate, it'll, it'll figure out what it needs to do um, right into the device. Really, really hard, uh, really, really hard uh, price to beat. This thing, it says it'll charge an iPhone 13 nine times, a Samsung S10 eight times, and an iPad Pro nearly three times. Um, so you're talking about a beast of a device available over at Amazon. Next up, uh, for uh, folks that maybe have a lot of devices that they're always trying to charge, here is a device known as the OneBeat. And it is a, it's a dual outlet cover, so it will use up two outlets, two gangs on a on a wall a receptacle. And what you get in turn is five regular 120 volt uh, three prong outlets, and then you also get two USB Type A's and a USB Type C that'll do a, a total of 3.1 amps uh, with those various devices uh, charging. It, uh, it's got, uh, let's see, 1,800 watts worth of joule protection. Um, you can pull a maximum of uh, 1,800 watts on it, uh, 15 amps. That's the limit of most of those receptacles anyway, um, and a max of 5 volts at 3 amps for the USB Type-C port. So a pretty nice device if you're trying to charge a couple of, a couple of things and you're always trying to juggle wall warts and various chargers. You can check that out on Amazon for just $10.50. There is a promo code, though. So click the link in the specials for that. All right, next up, if you're looking for a uh, headset, uh, HyperX makes a lot of really cool gaming peripherals, including uh, mice and keyboards and all of that stuff. Here is their Cloud Stinger gaming headset um, that uh, they claim will work with a whole bunch of different devices. Now, it is a wired device, so it has a 3.5 millimeter jack um, that you can plug into a combo jack on a laptop. You can also plug it into a phone, an Xbox or PS4 controller that has the headphone jack as well. It's a very versatile device. This is normally a $50 headset. You can save 62%. It's just 19 bucks. It also has a microphone on it built uh, over at Amazon. So you can check that out there. Next up, we talk a lot about AI 
And now we've got an AI cleaning vacuum. This is, uh, this is using a couple of interesting technologies, including LIDAR, which is uh, what the uh, goggle, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't this what like Tesla's and some of these other cars use to detect human presence, the LIDAR radar technology? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It means that it's not, um, it's not relying on, um, on, on video alone, right? So it should also work uh, okay in a non-lighted room or beneath the sofa or something like that. Yeah. It's a it's a lidar is a type of radar technology yeah. um, that yeah. you see that you see in in cars and things like it's that mainly for ranging. Yeah, correct, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And for a robot like this, that's yeah. a, it's by the way, it's just a vacuum, yeah. uh, so you'd want it to be able to do ranging and stuff like that. This is the Shark AI. Of course, they've got that right in the title there, so it can get its buzzwords selling. This is the RV two thousand and two. It is Wi Fi capable compatible as well with lidar navigation. This is normally 250 bucks on sale for a buck 69. I kind of put this in here as a joke, but um, if, you're in, if you're in the market for a, uh, a Roomba style device, I know Katie was looking at one. This is pretty hard to beat for 169 bucks. This has got a lot of cool devices. And um, Shark is a re very reputable vacuum cleaner brand. I have a regular um, Shark vacuum. Order, your, order replacement if parts in advance. Yeah. Exactly. Before, yeah, that was exactly what I was about to suggest. <laughs> if you buy this, make sure you can order replacement parts and uh, check. Never that mind first. replacement parts. Supplies. Supplies. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Supplies. That's what I mean. Supplies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. supplies. Um, yeah. take it for what it's worth. It's got a whole bunch of great reviews on Amazon. It's got five hundred and two reviews, and it's got a, a four point four point two stars. So. Yeah. Um, people seem to be happy with it. Um, Just not to not have it smacking into furniture is nice. Yes, because it is. If it detects um, it, it, it stops before it hits something. That's great. Yep. And like I've, like a lot of these other vacuums, you can set no-go zones and things like that as well. So yeah, uh, Shark, very reputable brand. Uh, and you can check that out over at uh, where is this? Walmart. Walmart. That's, uh, that's where that's up. And finally, Scrap that. Never mind. The last item is out of set is out of stock now. It was on stock. Oh. It wasn't uh, was in stock this morning and it is now out of stock. It was an Acer uh laptop and it is now out of stock online. So um All right. it was a really good price. Two fifty. It was on sale for a hundred bucks, but it is uh it is now out of stock. So sorry about that. Yeah. And that's so specials. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. A lot of cool thank stuff you, this week. You, I'm excited. You. It's been uh the last couple of weeks le headed towards Halloween and Thanksgiving have been great. Well, maybe because maybe was... you'll be able to negotiate with Amnon to get your budget imp improved so you can actually buy the stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, I, I've, I've been, been trying on... for years to get him to pay for it. He won't. I mean, if he'll buy this AI <laughs> vacuum for me, I can. I'll be happy to happy to test it out. It'll drag the cats. The cat when the cat misses the litter box, it'll drag the <laughs> shit all throughout the house. It'll be great. You need to train the cat to ride on top of it too. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you could also put a, uh, I think Katie was joking about putting an A word or a Google home on top of this thing as well. So it'll play music as it drives around your house. Um, so yeah, Sh check out, uh, check out the link on the, in the specials. I mean, speaking uh, of AI, I, I, there's something I want to discuss. Uh, I sent you guys a link, uh, a couple of uh, day or a couple of days ago about, uh, music industry, uh, somebody from the music industry complaining about AI in music production. The article itself was about uh, AI tools used in musical production, but most of the comment section of what I've sent, it was a Reddit thread, was about AI-generated music uh, and AI-generated content. Uh, one of the... Uh, running jokes there was the the article itself was probably ai generated <laughs> because <laughs> it seems like it's very repetitive uh what i wanted to raise a point and um all uh uh that uh, that repeating uh, uh uh notion of everything uh something 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 ai uh says something something is going to affect 
the industry, right? And I, and by the way, I totally agree. It is going to disrupt any industry it goes into. Uh, AI is going to disrupt probably uh, law. It's going to disrupt uh, uh, um, anything, anyway. Yeah, art, right? Uh, I mean, we're we're already talking about self-driving cars, right? So drivers uh, is a is a job that is we're going to see less and less and less of. But here we're talking about creative, and I think on the creative side, this is very interesting because, and, and you get to see it today in popular media a lot more uh, when you're looking at science fiction uh, of how this will play into effect. So the way I see it, there's AI is going to affect the music industry uh, and the movie industry later uh, in a very profound way because we're going to sit down, right, and wherever we are, and we're going to ask uh, our smart assistant, play me some music I like, right? And we're going to give it some identifying traits. And it's not even going to pull from the existing pool of music. It's going to generate whatever soothes our ear, right? And I see it as a very exciting technology and a very exciting promise, but I also see uh, how and why the music industry is like very fearful of that because it is going to take out the paycheck from one particular aspect of the music industry that I think nobody here really likes, and that's the music production companies, right? Mm. So when, when you see that is like, how do you envision this affecting your, let's say it happens within the next five to 10 years and not, my guess it'll be a, a bit more, like more than 30 to 40 years when we see it really disrupt things. but. Uh, when you hear about AI generated content, right? How does it make you feel? Because I am ecstatic if it comes and stays and if I can control the AI, I can ask it what to generate, right? I wanna see a movie about aliens uh, who dress in pink and, uh, uh, and, uh, and spread love across the universe and and that's the movie I want to watch, right? While another one will want to watch a horror movie, right? And uh, uh, with different aspects, right? And and it'll you'll everybody will generate their own. Everybody will be their own director. Everybody will be their own uh, creator, which I find it very very alluring, very very accessible, and For then me. they're gonna be. They're gonna be the superstars. Those who generate like fantastic content that everybody wanna watch, right? Pink Alien Everybody's is gonna... a Pink Alien What's is that? a horror. Pink Alien is a horror, horror movie to me. Uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I say you know, if you had a Pink Alien, that would be a horror movie for me. Well, yeah, maybe be true. For, that would be some, that yeah. would be like having a clown in it. It'd be scary, even though it's, oh, it's that just was a just clown. an example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's the idea. That's the idea. It's like everybody's gonna do. I, I chose uh, an out there idea, right? Because I'm sure nobody else wants to watch that, right? And so um, I will get the movie that I want to watch. It's a bit like uh, dreaming, you know, when, when somebody tells you about the dream and say, yes, or what, it, it affects you emotionally. It doesn't affect me when you're telling me about it. But so <laughs> there's going to be these, the content that we want to consume for ourselves. I mean, it, we have some of it today with, with video games, right? Uh, everybody plays their video games, but we also have those who everybody want to watch them play the video game, right? It's, it's something like that. But think about you are dictating to a computer the story that you want to see, and it plays it out in front of your eyes immediately, right? It's, there is, I mean, I understand the dangers, but I also say as a technology, right? This is exactly 
what we want. So it will, somebody will make this. Well, how do you see that at, future? At, at, well, like, it's do funny you find that you, it scary or not? It's funny that you bring this up because this has been, there has been a, uh, a similar, uh, outrage isn't the right word to use. There's been a similar style of event going on in the art industry. And it, it's it was it's happened and it's it's a lot further progressed along than it is in the music industry with um and Katie even talks about she uses one of these services to generate images and then she goes into Photoshop and cleans them up. Um, right. There's been a big a big concern that it is eventually going to get rid of artists and stuff like that, which I I don't think it will. I mean, there's you know, AI is AI is it only is going to get away with industrial artists, those who create content by volume. I am definitely, I'm, yeah. I am sure 100%, yes, it is going to cut into that market for sure. Yeah, because, yeah, but, but and, and guess what? And then you'll need, then there'll be something else that those people will be needed for besides, besides that side of it. Um, right. This is the inevitable. It's a lot easier to do with art than it is to do with, um, Right, music. I start think with, we're starting with something static, and then we're moving yeah. to something dynamic. It's going to change. I think music is next, and cinema is later. So, yeah. I, so I mean, it? It, you can. Uh, there's a lot of people that 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 are uh, trying to um, you know, talk poorly about it, and that's fine. But the reality is, it's what's going to happen. So, you can like it or not. Um, but this is this is the this is the fu- these are the future trends. So let, is this like the dragon this. dragon layer stage? Remember Dragon Lair, mm-hmm. Dra- Dragon yeah. Lair, which yeah, was yeah. the inter- interactive video disc game. Remember that because you actually had you could actually choose a path. You get to a certain point and you would choose. I'm going to go this way, and then the, the game would take a few seconds for to, a second to load, and then it would go down that path. It's kind of kind of cool. I was, that's what I remember as far as uh, interactive. Right. So well, think I, about something like that. Right, like a choose your own path adventure. But here, the path, they're not even laid out, right? right. Whatever your Develop. mind yeah. thinks of, take you will get that. Now, granted, most of what will be automatically generated will be crap. I mean, even, if, even, even although I asked for it, it won't be what I wanted. Because even in art, as, an, uh, 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 as artists, they progress, right? And they start... They, they, they draw something and then they modify it, right? And, and they change it and they change it. Sometimes they overpaint on it completely and, and, and go a completely different direction. It takes effort to create something that is worth walk, looking at, worth appreciating, right? But the fact that it's going to be very easy to pro- produce an outcome, right? Just by, you know, explaining what you want and not needing the skills to actually do it. Yes, it can be terrifying for those who have uh, uh, honed those skills for ages. And I do not in like, there is nothing here that I say that is useless skill. It's, It's an amazing skill. And I think those with the amazing skills Right, they are still going to be. They are still going to have a place in society, especially in art, because I think, I think this is going to just create a, a new market. There's going to be the wider market, the one, the one that we call pop culture today, right? That is going to be filled with this AI-generated stuff because that's going to be the cheapest way to produce anything, right? And then there's going to be human-generated stuff which is going to be the fringe. It's going to be, I mean, it's scary. It yes. Could be, it could be that the, that the human generated stuff, that there are people out there that just may not have the imagination to make the most of this. And you have creative people who develop content using this method that other people can enjoy. That's what I'm saying. It's going to, yeah. it's going to, it's definitely going to serve both, right? It's never going to be, even with AI generated content, you're going to go, you're going to have the one, was the the Stephen King was the image? We all know how to write, right? We all have the ability to write. Uh, once we pass uh, 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 high school, we have a very very well established vocabulary. 
we can continue studying and we continue we can continue to hone uh, our our uh, our traits and our craft right but those who can tell a story right those are unique individuals and those who are successful in telling the story are also unique individuals mm -hmm. now they are going to have to compete with people with less skill but while their imaginations right because the, i'm going to ask the computer to tell me an audiobook uh, to 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 play an audiobook about blah 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 something and the computer in the style of uh, you know this and this and this author and the computer is going to generate something right that might be you know way more interesting than uh, uh, what a stephen king will write and that might gain tractions with other people who find it because i'm sure it will also be shared right so it's a it it uh, takes away the middleman who um who is busy in uh uh in the production right it takes away the uh publishing house it's take, it takes away the editors it takes away all of that right you you take that that whole layer and you get something more direct, uh, something like YouTube for books, YouTube for music, YouTube for right stuff. Today, human beings generate whatever's there. Now it's going to be a human plus a computer that is going to generate that. All right, right. Uh, this is this is nice theory. I, I mean, need I need happening. I need something now. <laughs> right i mean right now the article goes that they are that the ria said uh, that there are uh services that purportedly use using artificial intelligence extract or rather copy the vocals instrumental and some portion of the instrumentals from a sound recording and or right. generate master or remix all this stuff here's right. what i want i'm getting sick and tired of youtube send me a notice after every time that i upload the show that somebody put a copyright on it the copyright yeah. is on the intro music we talked about it before yeah, yeah the intro music was purchased paid for and licensed to work that i can use it forever on anything right. that i want so it stopped and then it started again. And now again, right. I have to go every time and dispute it and show, put a, a link to the license and say this. When and you're that. disputing, are you talking with a human being? No, that's a, they don't let you talk. It's a, it's a form. Uh, hold on, hold on. You, you don't, there are human beings who work that system well that, right? that, now i understand uh, we're let, using let, a free service and all let, that let, but... let me let me, let me let, let, don't go too deep into it every time I, when i send it in five minutes later it was dropped Listen. okay hannah is telling me yeah dad i see it on facebook every one of your shows says that there is something in there that is copyrighted and the next day they say it was dropped i don't okay. do anything with facebook as far as disputing here is what i want i want an ai that will fight ai <laughs> i want happen. i want something yeah. i want a program that will take that intro music that actually somebody sat down and played and take it and re uh, what's the word we regurgitate it okay we'll we'll work on it and create something that's just like it but it's not it i'm sure the ai of youtube will not catch it here's the thing though yeah you're describing a problem that is not the problem with the music you're describing a problem with youtube's AI. system of right. determining it. yeah so that so that the music isn't the problem well no but at that point if uh, their ai is ch catching that music and say that somebody put already a copyright on it and they their ai is not that smart yet so it doesn't know okay one their time, ai is incredibly smart well but if i 
have to dispute it every week and show a license. I mean, when you go and you get again, stuck, that's a systems problem. The AI is right. detecting the music. YouTube needs to be able to to determine after you, you need to be able to upload that license. Oh, so I do every do time, every, every week. Listen to me, though. Yeah, you need to be able to upload that license in per, in perpetuity so that it doesn't do it. Well, every time. I didn't figure out how to do that, but I figured no, I'm not sure they exactly. offer it. And I'm saying that's yeah. the thing. It's the problem yeah, is not yeah, but, YouTube. And, the, pro and, the problem is not the music or the AI. It's that YouTube doesn't have a way for you to set and, and determine that that's what that music is. Plus, you need the AI to be able to, to, to um, find that music because what if somebody takes your intro yeah. and doesn't have the license right. to it right. and then rips it off? Right. Well, they don't have anything to upload to show them that they do. Well, I do. The, so that's I the do. thing. That's the problem. Yeah, well, I just figured that if Systems there'll be problem. something... And, and the other question is, uh, again, I'm talking about is, why am I required to show that I do have it? Why don't that uh, CD, somebody that says, says that they own it, have to show their side? I don't know. But anyway, it's not here nor there. I mean, I, I was just thinking of saying, wow. Create new piece of music that's just like it. People will see it. It'll still sound familiar, but it will not be that particular uh, production. I don't know if it if it exists, but it's interesting. Anyway, uh, here's something a lot more more important and uh, information that people need to know. We went to a friend yesterday for a birthday. And some people that were there, one of the people that I know, uh, uh, Gal, do you know Hod? No. Nope. Okay, Hod has Parkinson. And he is, he is, he is very, the tremors are really, really bad. And he is in IT. And we were talking, and he was talking about the, the problem that he has is many times it's when he uses the mouse, it, it does like three times, four times, and he has to right. go fix it and all that. And I said, wow, what a great idea to have something that will fix that. It will have some. And he said, well, there is, but uh, I don't know that, uh, that they won't let you try it and all that. So I said, okay, I'm going to look. So I came home and I went, looked, and there's an uh, item, I mean, a product called Device. Steady. It's not a device, it's software. Steady mouse. And it's made for that. And they were right. showing some videos how when first it's the, the, the mouse is like that with the line if you draw, and the next time with the software, it's just perfectly round. And wow, with software, it doesn't have even have to be a piece of hardware because I was thinking something that will capture all these and will say, okay, these came out, you know, just with, and he was saying that the problem is just with the mouse, not with the keyboard. Right. And the, the software is like um, 127 Canadian, whatever, which is, so I was saying, hey, I'm going to get it for him. Mm. Because this is something that, that can make somebody's life a whole lot easier. And okay. what an idea. And it's, and it's the only place that does this. I'm surprised that there's no more, there are no more. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's involved. So I, I don't know, but it's, it's, uh, it, if judging by the, the, the videos, it, it, it was like, a somebody was trying to draw a half a circle that was like all over the place. And with the software, it was a perfect round uh rounded circle so interesting it's called steady mouse and i think it's yeah. steadymouse.com yeah i find it on on a search engine yeah so if anybody that you I wonder know has if there's trimmers, an open source alternative i i, I could not find anything anywhere about anything that does this, not a device or software. I mean, I, I spent about an hour looking. I said, no, nah, that's fine. This is, this is good. 
So yeah, again, if you know anybody that has tremors, suffers from tremors and they use a computer or they want to use a computer, this is a great solution. Hi. Any anything else that uh, well, there there while there aren't any uh, any that tackle specifically for a mouse, right? Yeah. Even Windows accessibility right. mode, it has something. You yeah. have mouse keys, and yeah. then you can use the keyboard to control the mouse, well, right? Yeah. There's but that. There, there he. But he, I do find an open source solution for Windows. That allows you to use your eyes instead of your mouse. Well, your eyes and a and a webcam, and uh, you control where the mouse goes with your eyes. That's uh, interesting. It's a very interesting. Yeah, I wonder if the tremors of the head will affect it as well, right? Yeah, that's true. I don't know. That's an yeah. interesting problem. Yeah. That is very interesting problem. Yeah. Um. Okay. When you go and you buy a refrigerator or you buy, you, you have to look for a refrigerator or a washer dryer or any big appliance, what do you look for first? Does it have Wi-Fi? What's the second? Uh, does it have a screen on it? What else? Power rating. Power Warranty. rating. How are you? No, that, right? that, no, no. It's you don't. About, I, well, I, I, look for, I look for the AI, see if, see if it has well, AI. Well, listen to that. No, no, no. Nick is a red bladder Republican. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. No, people that have money, it's they don't care. Yeah. But I mean, listen. I'm so wealthy from working in radio. I mean, nothing matters. <laughs> listen to that. The administration said it will launch a cybersecurity labeling program for consumer Internet of Things devices starting in 2023 in an effort to protect Americans from significant national security risks. So now you're going to have a label on routers, modem. We're going to have we're going to have a health department ABC sticker uh -huh. on, uh, yes. on routers. That's what they're that's what they are going to launch. We'll see how that's going to work, yeah. but that's going to be interesting. You know, you pick up a but certain that, router and it will say, "Nah, this one is uh, high risk." It's going to work very very simple. Those with the A are just going to cost $100 more. That's possible too, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. it, it'll drive because, because uh, uh, it'll drive, um, what's the word? Um, R&D uh, and, 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 and people will have to, to get more it. More people will They're want the A's, right? So yeah. I forgot the, yeah. yeah. So demand, it'll drive demand. And so by demand, the prices will go up. And so, uh, very soon, Nick's specials is going to be about uh, Nick's spe specials is going to be about uh, high rate, highly rated, dollars, but it has a C rating, yeah. right? Compared to, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 or this is a great deal on an A rating. It's just uh, five dollars less than the one hundred yep. that it costs, or yep. something like that, right? So, yeah. So we were talking about. Well, I'm going to develop an AI to do specials. I'm working on it right That's now. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And, and it doesn't matter if, if it is or if it's not. It's gonna, just going to put something out there. Or maybe it will go and hack into the uh, retailer system and actually make it a special. They would appreciate that too. We're talking about USB-C. So the article goes, a USB-C port or cable can support a range of speeds power capabilities, and other features, depending on the specifications used. Today's USB-C can support various data transfer rates from 0 0.48 gigabits of USB 2.0 all the way to 40 gigabits in USB 4, Thunderbolt 3 and 4. Things are only about to intensify. As last week, the USB implemented forum, USB IF, they call them, published the USB 4 version 2.0 spec. It adds optional support for 80 gigabits per second bidirectionally bandwidth, as well as the optional ability to send or receive data at up to 120 gigabits. Wow. Will the cable melt? 
know. <laughs> or will it be one inch in diameter? <laughs> but that's uh, interesting. That's, that's actually not uh, not not that funny. <laughs> the reason I'm saying it. So I use uh, OnePlus uh, uh, phones, right? Yeah. And they have a fast charger on USB-C where, uh, and they have some, their own proprietary protocol for fast, fast charging. I get like from 20% to 90, 95% in less than 30 minutes. It's fantastic. But I must use their wires uh, to do it because otherwise it'll just uh, charge in the regular pace, mm -hmm. uh, slower pace. And the wire, while it's of great quality, they're not that flexible, right? They're really, really tough because mm -hmm. of their need to support uh, the temperatures. So yeah, that, uh, we're going <laughs> to... Everything has moved to the wires now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I ran into an interesting issue with a... I bought a... A uh, nightstand charger from my Apple Watch, mm -hmm. and I didn't notice that it actually said this is a no. This is not. This is a third party thing. Didn't notice that it actually says maximum one watt charger. What and I had a I had a two watt on it, and I I noticed that it'd be warm, pretty warm. And I know it gets warm, but it was warm, so I switched back to a one amp. Oh, and it doesn't get as hot. So. Hmm. Yeah, because it's for night charging and it, it knows it's going to get yeah. at least yeah. four hours there, yes. then it, it yeah. can it's not be, be lit. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's seven it's hours not. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about speeds, hardcore overclocker Elmore officially broke the CPU frequency world record with Intel's brand new Core i9-13900 24 core processor that's coming from Tom's hardware by hitting a staggering 8.812 gigahertz using liquid nitrogen cooling, dethroning the eight year reigning champion, the FX 8370 by 90 megahertz. 8.18, that's almost 8.9 which is almost nine, say, say, even say eight gigahertz. That's double of every sta other standard computer out there today. That, that is amazing. I'm sure it wasn't his hardware. He's probably using other people's that give him the hardware to try stuff. But yeah, talk about heat, liquid nitrogen. All right, that's here. very common for overclocking. Really? Oh, yeah. It's how oh, they, yeah. It's how they do it. It's the only way you can get frequencies at that high. Hmm. There's actually Next a guy that a guy that's in Raleigh, Gamers Nexus. Um, yeah. He's known for doing uh, overclocking with li uh, LN liquid li ni liquid nitrogen. Interesting. Okay. Imagine the uh, catastrophic failure if that's if the cooling system fails without some type of uh, protection in place to shut the power off. Well, that's the, the oh, there's I mean, uh, anything in there and, probably. Well, I mean, any consumer at this point, any consumer computer will shut itself off for heat. Well, I'm talking about in timing, how fast it can shut down. Oh, I mean, if once you, when you're once talking about those exceeds, temperatures, if you lose coolant. Well, the thing is though, those temperatures will you, you the, you thermal throttle. So, I mean, if you lose your LN, you're, you're running at eight gigahertz, you lose cooling, yeah, you you'll, you'll automatically throttle back to, you know, whatever the base clock is. You need to have a, a big lever on your desk that controls speed. Well, you should so, see what yeah. these guys do. They use blow torches and um, they use blow torches and uh, the liquid nitrogen because when they have to reboot, when the chip isn't running, the liquid nitrogen is too cold, so they have to you put a blowtorch into the um, so, into the pot to so keep it from the build. The, they'll freeze. Oh man, pilot Yeah, it's a very. The, you should, I'll post a video and chat. Wow. Should, it's Damn. very cool how they how they do LN, and it's all for performance. No, you can't yeah, operate it right. You can't so that, uh, operate it like that. It's just for to get a benchmark. Yeah, and then and then you're done because you have to literally constantly feed it with liquid nitrogen. 
So we're going to have a special computer version of Forged in Fire, a TV show about <laughs> making swords and stuff. Oh. With these giant furnaces. That would be good. They could marry L- the two. Listen, listen to this. This is something that people with old computers. Tech activist Jason Scott announced a new website called Discmaster that lets anyone search through 91.7 million vintage computer files pulled from CD-ROM releases and floppy disks. The files include images, text documents, music, games, shareware, videos, and much more. The files on Discmaster come from the Internet Archive, uploaded by thousands of people over the years. The new site pulls them together behind a search engine with the ability to perform detailed searches by file type, format, source, file size, file date, and many other options. So if you're missing a file on some older uh, installations, there's a good chance you can find it here. So but if you're of missing course, a DLL, a DLL for something? I'm sure if you need a DLL, but you need to know which one. I mean, the trick is to know what file you 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 need so it's called i've been to this site i've been to this i've been to this site okay yeah interesting disk master is it discmaster.com oh put put to the internet archive i've been to the site and what yeah cool i was looking for an old dll for a machine i was trying to resurrect to do one thing yeah yeah but you know which dll you're looking for yeah that's true which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> Here's something. This was like a, a, a feel good kind of uh, story. The failure rate of semiconductors shipped from China to Russia has increased by 1900% in recent months, according to Russian National Business Daily, Komer Sun. Quoting an anonymous source, they state that before Russia, Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, the defect rate in imported silicon was 2%. Since that war commenced, Russian manufacturers have apparently faced 40% failure rates. Even a 2% defect rate is suboptimal because products made of many components that can therefore experience considerable quality problems. 40% failure rate means supplies are perilously close to being unfit for purpose. So, and and these are two countries that, uh, I mean, I don't think China ever uh, accused or said something bad about Russia uh, invading Ukraine, did they? No, of course not. And yet China doesn't say anything bad about anything. It's just they don't say they don't. They don't seem important to speak to the world. So it doesn't really matter. And tell me if this is if you think this is true. Mark Zuckerberg writing on Facebook, a Facebook post. WhatsApp is far more private and secure than iMessage with end-to-end encryption that works across both iPhones and Android, including group chat with WhatsApp. You can also set all new chats to disappear with the tap of the button. And last year, we introduced end-to-end encrypted backups too, all which iMessage still doesn't have. I, don't I would choose... agree. Huh? I would agree. I hate Facebook. I hate whatever Zuckerberg is doing, Uh but specifically WhatsApp. I mean, it's not a perfect system, right? But compared to iMessage, yes, much more secure. Wow. What I will say, and again, it is accurate. You, 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 it, it is accurate that those features are are much more um, matured in in WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. The at least in the United States, I'm not speaking about the world, but in the United States, the amount of people that are using iMessage, though, and the, the stuff that it does have in terms of encryption is 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 very good. Um, and it's obviously a lot better than 
regular uh, SMS or MMS for, yes. for things of that nature. So, yes, um, but it's great that folks are, even with iMessage, which is a majority of U.S. compared to WhatsApp uh, or Signal or anything else, it's, it's good to see that they've got some of that stuff. Nice then. If you're just a note, right? If you're considering on switching for to anyone who's listening, of switching off iMessage because of security, I mean, don't go to WhatsApp, go to something else. Go to go to Signal. I would recommend Signal over a Telegram, but go to Signal or Telegram. Those are much more uh, effective in keeping you private. Now, you don't need to be a security nut. You don't need to be extra paranoid. It's not about paranoia. It's about setting uh, uh, clear boundaries, right? And protecting yourself going forward. You are now, you do not have anything to hide. Most people do not have anything to hide, right? And so it's not that of, it's not, it's not a big issue for anyone choosing a platform. So they choose just whatever other people are using and that's fine. Just understand that if you're a bit cognitive about what you are doing with yourself and your friends and you have some sort of voice and you are discussing on keeping yourself a bit more protected, do that yeah. with a, a, a platform that will most likely remain that way going forward. And right now, those are uh, Signal and, and Telegram. All right. if, you're, if, if you want to go the extra mile, set up a Matrix uh, uh, Synergy server. But, uh, but that's very technical, right? Yeah. I'm talking about a non-technical solution. All right. And if you use a phone a lot, smartphone, Sure. I mean, everybody. Uh, well, listen to this. Sure. You may <laughs> be trying to cut out, cut down on screen time by tracking your minutes in an app on the very same smartphone you're trying to unplug from. But now, but how about a smartphone that doesn't even have a screen to stare at in the first place? Oh, boy. <laughs> Enter my menu. It's M Y M A N U dot com. My menu's. Titan screenless smartphones. Titan is a set of eSIM enabled voice controlled earbuds with embedded live voice translation. So what can you do with a screenless smartphone anyway? According to my menu, you can make calls, send messages, listen to music or other streamed content, and even translate speech into a 30 uh Lang into thirty in into over thirty languages using its built-in My June app. So basically, all of the phone parts of having a smartphone, minus the hours of fracking around on apps, games, and social media. Its website. Website, its website promise, promises the phone allows you to <clears throat> interact without constant screen glare, <laughs> get better sleep, reduce eye strain and headaches, reduce anxiety, avoid nasty bacteria or viruses from constantly touching your screen. The downside, there's no screen. I mean, it, this is real. I mean, this is great. I, I don't see a problem, Amnon. Why are you so sarcastic? Oh, well, this? I mean, come on. What do you need the screen for if you really want if just, you're really the just the phone? If you really just the phone. Yeah, if you just need a phone. I mean, and this is for people who really want a phone. A phone, and right? you can listen to music. Look, you can, you can I'm, I'm, I don't know, but I'm guessing there's a GPS, and you can actually get uh, um, uh, directions as well. It means you are less... Uh, it it's it's a it's a smartphone for your ears instead of smartphone for your eyes, right? Yeah, I I get it. I don't know if they'll be successful because I'm guessing the visual medium is a lot stronger 
But if they can create a market, then that's great because there's a lot of people who are still going to need, right, communication. There, there's downside to vocal communication and there's downside to visual communication. Oh. It's an interesting, I, I mean, I, I wish them well. I know I won't buy it, right? I am a very visual person. Uh, How are you going to use these in a library? You can't. Okay. Then I spend a lot of my time in the library. So. What What does the TikTok app look like on this? It doesn't look like anything. <laughs> <laughs> 14-year-old girl dances without parents' consent. Right, yeah. It's going to be uh, <laughs> annotated. Yeah. What you're looking at right now or what you're listening to. Well, first of yeah, all, it's... no, that, that, this is actually a good point. Will this cater to blind audiences? Right? It uh, seems like looking at the website, it's catering towards fitness because it says leave your smartphone at home. It seems like this yeah. is for if you're working out, you have this device and you can still do some of your stuff but you don't have to carry around a phone. That's what it's looking like. Everybody in this is running or wearing something that is indicating that they're exercising. Yeah, that's the marketing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which actually is pretty cool. That's part of what the uh, you know, Apple Watch already does, though. They have the Apple Watch that has the um, eSIM built where you can get an right. eSIM version of it, and it's a similar thing. So when you're out, exercising you don't have to carry around the phone and you can still get your fitness tracking and messages and stuff like that so but you have to look at the, at the watch i mean everybody C always, correct and yeah. if you're trying to do fitness stuff it makes sense to look at it it's right it's not very uh it's just interesting it's, it's not very good for um me, like listening to exercise stats is <laughs> i can't imagine very lucrative yeah, i think their sweet spot is fitness or people that are in professions where it's not convenient to have a phone. If you're a professional driver, you're not supposed to have your cell phone mm -hmm. there when you're driving, right? So it'd be easier to have this like this and just use voice commands. All right, then what? the last thing yeah. I have that I want to rant about is Dropbox. Marshall, Dropbox. Marshall sent me some big files that took him hours to transfer. This was for that computer here that I installed the Windows 10, reinstalled. I got a message. It says, Marshall Bank invited you to go to this folder, blah, blah, blah. I click on it. It says, log in. I, said, I don't have a Dropbox login. I don't want to log in. But he sent it to an email address. Yeah. That's the, he could have sent you just the link. Oh, yeah, okay. And you choose as the sender whether they have to log in or not. Okay. Well, I, we spent, me and him, about, I mean, I, there was no way for him to send it again because it was, it was about 40 gig. So I knew I can't ask him to do it again. But we tried, and the interesting thing is, every time I go into the link, it will be different. Then I said, you know what? Okay, oh, he gave me his login. He said, try that. I went in. No. Yeah, but once said, the way Dropbox works is you're putting it in what, the cloud. Wait a second. It's, it's not a, really a file wait, transfer. Wait, wait, wait a second. I said, I'll do the... the um, Temporary. Oh, yeah, the, it must the be trial. The, email that the, he... the trial thing. So I went and I Why put trial. I what? They asked. I, I, have you used Dropbox.com? No. .com? And no. My Dropbox is free. Well, when I went you in, you didn't use Dropbox. It, they wanted me to set up an account, yes. and there was either the pro or trial. So I said Ooh. trial. Well, when it went there, there, there. Hey, what's your credit card number? I said, no, uh-uh, no, I'm not doing this. This doesn't sound right. Went back. Again, Amnon, did you use Dropbox.com? I, yeah, it was Dropbox.com. You are and And all the information, like a... all the information on the page was correct with his name and, and this, and you need to go there. And 
but there was no download. Finally, I don't know what he did on his. It, it wanted me to join the group. So I joined the group because there were four people. And finally, it, it was there that I could go in and had to click on more options and see download. But I said, what a pain in the butt. And now, I, well, you said, you asked me if I ever used Dropbox. I never used Dropbox. But his secretary always sends me uh, Excel sheets to put on the website. And I just get an email, and it's got a link, and I click on it, and it comes right up and said, download these. That's how Dropbox and, works. Yeah. Yeah. I said, Marshall, you need to talk with Dina and see what is, how is she doing it? Now he's using it all the time. And apparently he's talking with people that have that. Because at he one was, point. He is approaching it from the cor corporate group perspective. Yeah. You were just, that's why he was trying well, to set you up to be part well, of his corporate group. At that's one point, I, understand. I got in there and it says, yeah, you can download it, but. I started and it stopped and it says your limit is two gig. So oh, well, you need that, to now upgrade. that's actually that actually might be the case. That makes sense. No, I, I'm not you trying to download account. it though. You should well, still be able to download it. It's just not, it's it's two gig. They might limit on a free account how big of a file. You well, can but download. the thing no, is, that's the thing, guys. Look, no. I'm not. I understand you had a terrible experience, yeah, but it's because of user error here. I understand. Not because of a flawed I, design I, of the system. I understand. A file can be shared, right? If he is allowed to upload a 40 yeah, gigabyte dry, uh, file, he can also let you download it without having a Dropbox account. Well, now, if he is passing it to your Dropbox account and Dropbox is limited to only two gigabytes, yes, you will need to pay for an account to hold that 40 gigabyte file. It just makes sense. It's, it's, it's just accounting, right? Uh, you want an account that holds 40 gigabytes? I thought about we, that. We will then, sell it to you. But right? then I'm, I was, so, I understand. But then I was thinking, I'm not trying to keep it there. I'm just trying to suck it in. He already uploaded it. Obviously, it took it. So that's the thing. It's only by, he just needed to share a link instead of sending it to another okay. account. I'll he did him. the mistake. Okay. And you went through hell, but the mistake is not because the system is designed incorrectly is just a, a, a bad choice within the system okay all right all right i know that that makes my that makes it i think i figured that something is he did something the wrong way because i get i get it from their office and i don't have to do anything it's just there right click yes but, exactly oof. if it's just a click without asking then that is what he needs to do look it sounds scary because him. the the solution, right, is sharing a link that anyone on the internet can use. That's the wording, right? But then again, if nobody knows the exact link, right. how will they download it? It's yeah. not like it's published somewhere. So you get the link, you download it, and then you remove it. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about the... Uh... As in Firefox has something like this that you can share a file or, I mean, but I, I, I was not looking into other solution because I, I knew. Because he already uploaded. Yes. It's, and it took hours and I knew I, I can't ask him for this. So I was trying. And it to. took you one minute to start describing it. Right. And yeah. for us telling you yeah. there's a different yeah. way. Yeah. Right, Next because time, you're don't using send it. those hours because you're using and, and now you know the difference. So I'll tell him. Yeah, but about you that. said something in there that was very concerning. You said that you he gave you his login yeah. to his Dropbox account yeah. and you couldn't download the file. Correct. That's I look, that's that's a hundred percent user. There's well, that's no, uh, because it's probably using the single sign on of the company. Right? It's uh and he a logged into his login. account. Yeah, I logged him to his. He gave me the username. He and I logged and the into password. his account where the file yeah. was uploaded and couldn't figure out how to download it. That is that that's that's that not is a bizarre. Drama. It wasn't yeah, there. That's... It was there though. Oh, he walked it's me still through. There. It. He walked me through it and he said, "Here, do go here, go." Here. I said, no, "I don't see it." They tell me that I have to have more space. They said that I have to. Do you it. you were logged into his account then and it was telling you he needed in. more yeah. space. Yeah. 
something's not because he said yeah. he said no no way i have all the space i want anyway it was i mean at that point i was frustrated i very possible that the, the error was on my side it's very possible oh no it was the original how he shared this. the file hold on where does marshall live wilson in raleigh no i know it's in how wilson. long is the drive yeah i know i know that's, that's <laughs> I know. far <laughs> i know and the no, funny thing and the like funny thing is going to with a usb drive and Driving and, back would have been and faster. We, and by the time we finished, when I figured out how to download it, we were, then we stayed on the phone for a little longer. By the time we finished, it was already downloaded. And he said, what, you already got it? I said, yeah. Well, you said, have fiber. Need, he said, I need to look into a different provider. Who does? Him. Marshall. <laughs> for what? For, it I took mean, him he's hours got, to he's upload got, the 40 gigabyte he, file. That makes sense. I mean, forty gigabytes uncompressed is a is a, is a where where he lives. He might not have an available. He does it. That's better. He's got green light, but yeah, uh, he's in a he's in a very rural area in the mountains. No, 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 no. The, he was in in Wilson. Oh now, boy, I'm glad he wasn't doing it from the mountains over there. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, over there it's ten ten megabits. Oh yeah, it was interesting. It sounds it. So I'll, I use I'll, Dropbox almost on the daily, and people send me large okay. video files, and I've okay. never experienced anything like you just okay. described. I'm the, I'll need to tell him. Yep. Good. I would not do not tell him to switch from Dropbox. No, 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 no. To okay. send it in a different. To I told him right off the bat. I said you need to ask her how she's sending me those files because it's when just, she's sending it's me, just simple. It's yeah. just simply how you share it. Just yeah. like when you're in Google Drive or just like when you're in Outlook or Office 365 or any other online system, you can choose. Am I sharing with an account? Does the person have to have an account? Do they need to have a link? Is it available to everybody on the internet? I mean, it's it, every online service has permission. It's literally permissions. That's all it okay. is. All right. That's wild. Yeah. Why didn't you call me? I was on the phone with him. There was just nothing. How long? <laughs> oh, maybe uh, half an hour. Oh, okay, that's not terrible. No, it's, it wasn't terrible. It was just frustrating. Yeah. I was just going to say three hours, then I would have. No, 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 no. No, it took him hours to upload. All yeah. right. Okay. Well, 30 minutes isn't the worst thing. Though. Yeah. No, it's not. And obviously, now that I learned that, it was worth it. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring it up. Oh, all, all, it's all good. Anyhow, it's that time of day. Anywho. Anywho, anyhow. Anything else anybody wants to bring up? Guys? Think. Nada. Think, think, think hard. Nope, nope. No? We covered it all today. All right. Okay. Well. Thanks, Gal. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Spence. It was a lot of fun. And good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie and Donna, Dina, Eleanor, Sarid, Yaakov and Yale. Thanks, everybody, for tuning to Computer Stuka Now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive and update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach us at computerstukeno.com. And again, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., Nick is on Wilmington's 980 The Wave and 107.9 FM. You can tell your Echo device to play 980 The Wave, and you can listen to him. Or you can go to the recordings at nickcraig.com. And Tuesdays at 7 p.m., again, Nick and Brian do the Infection Podcast on Twitch. So 7 p.m. Tuesday evenings, you go to twitch.tv slash infection podcast, one word. That's a podcast about games, game news, gaming news, and the like. Have a great week. We'll see you here again next week. Bye-bye. You are tuned to 
the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.